Hola, reyes y reinas, high kings and queens. I pray today that I find you excited. If I don't find you excited, borrow some of mine. I pray that you have some great expectancy, kings and queens, today. Because I'm going to tell you, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, Lord. We honor you for your word, accomplishing what you sent it to accomplish in our lives. We don't know what it is, Father. I don't know what it is, what you need. But the Lord knows what you need. He knows where you are weak. He knows where you feel unequipped, unable. And there is where he will feel, you will find his presence. <laughs> you got to surrender and submit to his presence so we can have that same power that he says we have in his word. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your uncommon, unearned, unexplainable, preferential treatment of whatever treatment it is that we need, Lord. We thank you for your exceptionally able, pre-qualified, favored, protected, deserving, pre-approved, equipped, that you have equipped us in Jesus' name. To be, create, serve, fulfill, and experience the powerful presence where it will shift our perspective in Jesus' name. We pray and we request and we thank you in advance for your perspective. Your presence and your perspective brings your peace, your protection, your prosperity, your partnerships in Jesus' mighty name. So we honor you, Lord, for the amazing, miraculous love that you give us. And it gives us great light in any area of darkness that we may have in Jesus' name or be experiencing. In Jesus' name. So I speak the name of Jesus over rev revival, restoration in your life, healing in your hurting, in your sorrow. Circumstances are changing right now. Bring in Holy Spirit. Breakthrough is happening right now, today. Unity and peace is flowing within us to flow outward. In Jesus' name, any fears inside of us are fleeing. In Jesus' mighty name, every curse is broken over our lives and over our children's lives. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe it, receive it. Say amen. Type amen because God is doing the impossible. In Jesus' mighty name, if I find you with a hole in your soul or a break in your heart or even a block in your mind right now i pray that the lord gives you solutions answers you may have questions you may have confusion may the lord give you great clarity knowledge revelation insight clarity spiritual discernment where to lean in where to lean out father we thank you and we honor you for the light we thank you father for being the light and that we know and trust in your love in your protection, in your peace. We trust in submitting to your presence because where your presence is, we feel an overflow of love. We feel joy because the joy that we have is the strength in the Lord. That's what I'm learning. So today we are reading, have your way, great God that you are. And we thank you for advancing us, encouraging us, educating us. And right now in the name of Jesus, we request that we can have the teaching, the guidance, the guided instructions on how to be rooted in your love. Have your way, great God, that you are. Ephesians 3, 17, 18 reads, I pray that you, you and I, whoever's on the sound of my voice, being rooted and established in love may have the power, dot, 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 to grasp how wide and long and how high and deep is the love of Christ. Mm -mm -mm. So I pray, I'm requesting, we are requesting, Lord, that we are being rooted deeply and firmly rooted and established, founded on your love. Because in your love, we know that you love us. So therefore, you're going to protect us. You, We have sovereignty, meaning protect. He's going to cultivate us, nourish us, guide us, teach us, provide for us, protect for us. Give us his shifting of perspective in Jesus' name. To grasp. We need to be able to grasp it, to see it, to believe it, to know it. So therefore we can trust in it. Grasp it and hold on to it. Don't let it go. Grasp is to hold firmly, tightly. How wide, how long, how, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. So when we know that, the deep, the measurements, the heights, we know that if any, something seems impossible, he is all possible, all knowing. All doing, all creating, all trusting in Jesus' name. So I pray that this gives you great revelation. We must overflow in his love. So we can be an overflow everywhere we go. Because he is God. And love is a deep feeling or affection of feeling internally. And we're going to learn today. If you need light in any darkness, let's get into it, Holy Spirit. Bring it, Holy Spirit. Give us an overflow of your love, a trust, and a knowing that you got us. If God called the ocean to, to wave and life is lifing, the sun is sunning, the trees are treeing, then you need to create. You need to have the same obedience. God is guiding. The devil is deviling. But God is guiding. God rules over 
the devil. Things may be happening, but remember yesterday's quote was, things happen to us. God sends who helps us, who loves us, who hurts us, who heals us. If he sends all of this, it's because he's in all control. He bow. What he says to bow, sickness will bow. Sickness will end. Div division will end. When you have unity and peace, you can give it. If someone can't give you unity and peace, they ain't got it. Pray for them. Let's get into it today. I'm going to read it to you. Ephesians 3, 17 and 18, which is, I pray that you be rooted and established in love. May have power to grasp how wide and long. You have to have his power to even grasp it. And how high and deep the love of Christ is. Amazing love is today today's uh, title. The author writes, if you need a light in darkness today, let me give you the definition real quick of light, which is the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. If you are rooted in God's love, you're going to see God wherever you look. You're going to see that stimuli, stimulating sight that makes things visible the way he wants you to see them. You want to see things through God's eyes. An expression in someone's eyes indicating a particular emotion or mood. The verb is to provide with light or lighting makes something start burning, igniting. Ooh, what did we learn yesterday is that we are conductors. We ignite. We are ignited to ignite. Uh, having a considerable su sufficient amount of natural light, not dark. Okay. God is a God of light, hope, and love. The enemy is a liar, deceiver, darkness. He wants us to stay in darkness. What can you do in darkness? Not much. You can't do much in darkness because you can't see. We have to have the Jesus joy to see Jesus everywhere and anywhere. Because if we don't see Jesus, we're going to see the devil deviling. And if you're seeing the devil deviling, it's going to depress you, suppress you, put fear in you. But when we see things in light and we look at the world and we're like, I see God there. I see joy. I see peace. I see patience. I see kindness, gentleness, self-control, generosity. I, I can tell you that when I look somewhere, I see Jesus. I focus. I'm walking on my water, walking on the water the Lord has called me to because I'm going to see the light. If I can't see a light, then that means that I need to shift my perspective and get in prayer. I need to get back into reading scripture to activate myself so I can activate others. So let's get into it today, Holy Spirit. If you need a light in darkness today, the author writes, ponder God's amazing love for you. As he knit you together, he loved you. Psalm 139 and 13. He knit you together. He created you in a fashion, a fashion way. He fashioned you. He designed you. That means he designed and created and fashioned someone else for you that's going to tailor and fit you perfectly, even in their flaws. Bring the Holy Spirit. May we be able to see you. When we see you, we see your partnerships. We see your peace. We see your perspective. We see your prosperity. We see your protection. We have a grateful heart and we'll see your partnerships where you're calling us to partner with people to advance your kingdom in Jesus' name. Open doors that no man can shut and close doors that no man can open. Before you could choose him, he chose you. He chose you, period. He chose you for such a time as this. I, I would tell you that I was making a reel today and, you know, it's talking about how a t your gift will make room for you. And a lot of us are called to create things and you don't see people supporting you. You see your views, people watching you, but they ain't supporting you. But I'm going to tell you, you keep creating, keep serving, keep activating, keep igniting for God. You're working for God. Colossians 3.23 is you're working for God. That is your master. Not your humans. Not the, the humans here on earth. You're doing things because he chose you. If he chose you, he opens doors and he closes doors. No matter if people are not supporting you, liking you, they're watching you. God is means that that means that God's already using you because they're watching you. Bring the Holy Spirit. John 15, 16. Before you chose him, he chose you. When you were broken, bitter, and blaming, he made you whole and showed you the sweet taste of his forgiveness. Thank you, Father, for your forgiveness and grace. Oh Lord, bring the Holy Spirit. Psalm 103, 8 and 12 will remind you. 8 through 12 will remind you that he's showing you the sweet taste of favor and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your forgiveness. When you had no hope, he became your hope. When you had no hope, he became your hope. Have you ever been in a situation where you're like, God, why do I have joy in this situation? This is crazy. Uh, yesterday, I feel like I wanted to die. And today, I feel like I don't even remember what happened yesterday. Or I'm leaving yesterday and yesterday. Or today, I woke up and I feel like, circumstances are changing breakthroughs happening right now in jesus name first peter 1 and 3 will remind us that when you had no hope he became your hope i'm telling you i am is who he is so that means that he is i am in whatever it is that you need i am he created everything he gave people ideas to create tables and chairs out of wood and houses 
He gave people ideas on how to create cement and all these things out of like rock or however it is. I don't have that idea. So I don't know exactly how that was made. But somebody, God gave somebody. God gave somebody the idea to create electric cars. God gave somebody the idea to create that flat iron, that blow dryer queen, that makeup. <laughs> uh, what about that holy lash? Bring your holy spirit the way I Lord and Esme beauty. He gave me the idea on creating a holy lash. When you were too busy to when you were too busy with the cares of this world, he interrupted you and showed you what is eternal. Psalm 90 and 4. 90, 90 and 4. He interrupted you to show you what is internal. Has there ever been a great revelation in your life where like, wow, that's happening, but God is God. Mm -mm -mm. When you were lost, he found you, rescued you, and showed you that his mercy and justice will prevail will prevail. Luke 15. So that means that his mercy, his justice is going to prevail in your life. Things that are happening in your life, he's prevailing. He is eternal, never changing. He don't change his mind like the way we do. Fix it, Lord. Fix that indecisiveness. He created the ocean to ocean. He created water to refresh, hydrate. He is the forever living water that gives us eternal fulfillment, filling what needs to be filled and hydrating us in such a way that only he knows why, who, when, where. And we are to do that for others. Refresh others because he refreshes us. Luke 15. When you were disappointed, he taught you that disappointments can bring you to appointments. He ordained. Bring it, Holy Spirit. Disappointments bring us to divine appointments. And they're divine disappointments. Or God sent disappointment. Oh, Lord, I didn't get that person. Thank you, Jesus, that I didn't get that person. I'm telling you, I thank God more than ever now. Like, I feel like my life is, is just beginning where, where everything had to end. He begins. When you end with you, he begins. When you were disappointed, he brought you. He taught you that disappointments can bring you appointments. He has ordained. Romans 8, 28. Mm -mm -mm. Then in his ultimate act of love. I'm going to tell you, things that I have been disappointed in, I'm just like, mm, it didn't work out. I only wanted that house. Now I'm like, okay, it didn't work out. God's got better. God will take something from you or, or make you surrender it forcefully sometimes. I don't even know if it's forcefully. Sometimes you just remove something from you and you're like, mm. or you can cry and be devastated and curse God. I'm praying for you because I've been there. The Lord healed it and fixed it because now I know that when things don't work out, I'm disappointed. It's because something's coming. Something's coming greater. I want to be prepared, equipped, and ready for it. So if it disappointed me, I'm like, okay, well, what do I need to prepare for, Lord? Because I trust in you and I know that you love me firmly and you love me deeply. And to the greatest heights. Amen. Then in his ultimate act of love, Jesus owned the cross. He made a way for us to be with God. Now you are empowered to know his love and bring his hope to a world to desperately know him. You were introduced him to introduce him to others. You were created by him to create for others. You were healed by him to heal for others. You are blessed by him to bless others. You are talented, skilled, and anointed and called. He chose you, John 15, 16, to go out into the world to let others know that they are chosen too. To encourage others, to educate others, to bless others, to refresh others. Wherever your cup is overflowing, you need to go and be that for others. Bring it, Holy Spirit. May we be obedient. Fix it. Heal it, Lord. We're healed to go heal others. Today's quotes are, and love, said, and love said, at the heart of all life, you will find me. At the heart of all life is my home. Laura Jaworski wrote that one. And here's another one by Laura Jaworski. The further down my spiritual path I go, the less I am able to define. When I turn and how I find no words. Only light and love. Laura Jaworski. So what it's saying is that, at, and love, this is love speaking. At the heart of all life, you will find me. At the heart of all life, in your deepest trials, tr tr tribulations, in your deepest sorrows, is where you find love. And love and light are eternal. They're inside. Have you ever talked to someone and you're like, and they're deep. You know, they're deep about everything because they're internal. 
they're connected with their being they're connected with their creator god has created so much wisdom so much love so much light in me that everywhere i go i try to bring some type of beauty some type of love i want people to know that they are seen they are heard they are recognized they are acknowledged because that's how god makes me feel he sees me he provides for me he cultivates me he nourishes me he equips me he gives me this knowledge and revelation when I go place anything. I'm like, Lord, thank you. <laughs> thank you for giving me that divine wisdom. And I have a responsibility to share that. And this is why I come live consistently. God has created seriously some consistency in this system right here. Because I will tell you, I was always late. I was always irresponsible. I don't know. But I always knew I was called and at some point in my life, I began, I began to have a deep feeling and affection for the Lord. Where it wasn't just that I love him, I honored him with my time, with my, um, with my finances, with my life, with my love, with my children, my, my grandchildren, my husband. I honor because I know that he brought these relationships in my life to advance me and for me to advance them. We are called by love. He loved us to love others. If you have this joy and this grace and you're like, oh, I feel so good, be that for others. That's your blessing and that's your calling and that's your responsibility. So I say uh, rain responsibility. I can't put my crown on today because true story, my grandson threw it a couple of times and it, it was withstanding. And he finally threw it yesterday and broke it. And I pray for me. I was like, Lord, I love this child. I am rooted in his love. <laughs> i'm gonna tell you be testing me so it's broken and i'm getting a new one for right now we'll put on her crown some of us have some broken crowns some of us they're broken like they're literally broken put it back together the lord is mending the lord is healing put it back together so soon i will have a crown in jesus name um today's prayer is lord god your love is overwhelming show me show you show us how to share your light in darkness show us how to activate our own light or your light in our darkness so we can go out and be activators lord we honor you we thank you for teaching us showing us overflowing us and that your words activate in us and the way that you sent your word to accomplish in our lives and activate in our lives we honor you lord and may we have that same obedience to go out into the world and be light and love may we know you deeply rooted firmly so when no matter what comes our way or who comes our way we trust in you and we do not lean on fear we're going to lean on faith in jesus name so Today, um, there's another prayer I wanted to share with you from this scripture, which is, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how high the deep of love Christ is, the deep love of Christ is, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be able to fill the measure and all the fullness of God in Jesus' name. We honor you, Lord, and we thank you. So what does it mean to be rooted and established in love? It is knowing God is all loving, all powerful Father. It means putting down roots into that love. Putting your roots into it. Not into the bitterness. Not into the traumas that have happened. It means having that love turn into a well-directed and effective energy in one's personal life. In your personal life, my personal life, in Jesus' name. We have to be well-directed and effective energy into rooting it, turning love, replacing love for anger, replacing joy for anger. Does it make sense? So I pray that, that blesses you. If you do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in my life. Thank you for loving me right where I am. Thank you for transformation in my life. Thank you for advancement. Thank you for education in my life. In Jesus' name. We pray this, mighty Lord, we thank you for your miracles, signs, and wonders. And we honor you, Lord, that we are created to create. We are loved to be loved because you, Father, are the greatest of all love. God is love. We are created in love, for love, to be love. You can't, ex you can't share love, be love, if you don't experience. And the one true love, you may not ex experience it in human life sometimes, but I pray the Lord sends you relationships to love on you unconditionally healthily love so you can be that and create that because god in jesus name will send you relationships to love you to help heal you he sends you sometimes people to hurt you so you can understand and learn what his love doesn't look like and what his love looks like in jesus name may you have great discernment of where to lean in and where to lead out 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, God first in the Bible or a daily devotional to help you get activated and learn his word, message me. I will get it back to you. I will get it to you. Godspeed. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to me. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your time invested, kings and queens. I cannot thank you enough. It's all glory to God um, for the words that I bring forth. I'm telling you it's because God has called me. Was it always easy? No, it wasn't. But God. I'm going to tell you, be obedient in creating. You may not see people supporting you, liking you, sharing you. You keep creating, building, serving, and you will continue attracting your community, your tribe, your, your kingdom that you're reigning over to protect, serve, and cultivate these people. Encourage them. So in Jesus' name, we honor you, Lord, and we thank you for today's word. If it advanced you, educated you, activated you, deactivated you so the Lord could work. We honor you, Lord, and we thank you. And I pray that you refresh others by sharing this. Be obedient. Reign responsibly, kings and queens. Where God calls you, prompts you to share, you lead to your promises. So remember, this also said today that if you have any disappointment, it is going to lead you to a divine appointment. God bless you, kings and queens. Thank you for your time invested. I pray that you're blessed, advanced, encouraged, and whatever area you have weakness, that the Lord empowered you through this devotional. I'm praying for you. I'm in agreement with you. God is always good. You were created to create. Are you creating? God is at work. Are you? God bless you, kings and queens. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.